Good day, I'm Terry Shea, uh, U.S. Thai Martial Arts Association. What we're going to do today is work on a combination of joint locks used in what's called a slip set. A slip set basically is transitional joint locks, going from one lock to another. It could be same side hands, uh, opposite side hands, it doesn't really matter because there are a number of slip sets that work um, in this capacity. What we do on one side, we can do on the other, although various details change. What we're going to work first on is basic grab releases. And there are several ways of doing this. The first, and probably, you know, this isn't part of a slip set, but when a person grabs you, you have a number of ways to get away. One is to strike them, the other is to strike the, grabby, the grasping hand. What we're going to do here is we're going to show you how blocks can work to release grabs. And these are just standard blocks. Inward block, upward block, upward block, downward block. In these blocks, they're designed to do two things. One is to block, the other is to strike. And those strikes can be used to parry or dislodge grabs. So this is what we're going to do here. We're going to start with your basic inward, outward, upward, downward blocks, and we're going to see how they work to release grabs. With me today is, is Rob Smith. We're going to work on these together. So Rob's going to grab my hand here. What I'm going to do is use a common outward block to break the grab. This involves both pushing and pulling. Pushing with this hand, pulling with the other. So as I come into block, I lock the forearm in to my elbow. As I do this, I pull this hand sharply and bring the hand and push. Well, you can call this a push, but it's actually more of a cross movement, and you can push this hand in the opposite direction. So when we do this, we're actually doing the push-pull method. We strike here. Now this can go on to create a strike. So as we block here, we've got strike. We can do that. Let's look at the upward block. Upward block works the same way. We come up, push-pull, drive. Inner block, if I do an inner block, now this is the tricky part because this one doesn't really release any grabs, but what it can, actually it can, but it doesn't work quite the same as you'd expect. We're not actually uh, crossing our arms here. We're simply bringing the arm in and striking out. So, downward block, exactly the same way. Hand grabs, downward block. All these are meant to strike different parts of the hands, different parts of the nerves, different parts of the forearms. And they're meant to do this because each strike has a specific effect. You have the radial and ulnar nerves that run on both sides of the wrist here. At about two inches above the joint of the wrist, here and here, the nerve lies very close to the bone. If you strike there, you can make it very, very hard for that person to continue using that hand. One of the things I was taught years ago was that if you really want to uh, distract a person, cause them pain, you grab both sides of that nerve, you lift and twist. That can be very painful. If you're drunk, of course, you're not going to feel too much. But we're talking about something, let's say he grabs, okay? We're going to take the hand here and we're going to grab the opposite side and we're going to twist and lift. This is very uncomfortable. Anybody who tries this and gets the right points on both sides of the wrist, again, about two inches above the joint of the wrist, you'll find that this can be quite painful. It does take grip strength. It does take knowing your anatomy fairly well. Now, getting on to the dynamics of the strikes, each strike is actually designed to hit a nerve, whether it's inward, outward, up, or downward. They're all designed to strike nerves. When you strike a nerve, you have first the shock to the nerve and the nervous system itself. When you impact a nerve, it actually impacts the entire nervous system to a small degree. The larger the nerve, the more the impact. The harder the impact, the more it impacts the rest of your nervous system. So when we do these strikes, we have the option of actually kind of setting this person up in a weakened state. When they're in that weakened state, we have, of course, a much better chance of defending ourselves. And this pretty much goes without saying. I think this is kind of a common sense approach to it. Now, when we do joint locks, we're not actually impacting the nerves, though we can, and I'll show you how in just a minute. In the slip set, we use joint locks, but we also use pressure points. So, let's look at the first slip set that doesn't use any pressure points. This is the same side grab here, hand here. The weakest part of the hand is the thumb. So if I simply rotate my wrist, it opens the hand. That's all it takes. 
Now, if I want to strike at the same time, I simply move in and bring the elbow through. This gives me both the, the grab release and the strike. Now notice he's grabbing right where the nerves are. Most people don't know to squeeze the nerves using only two fingers. That's what gets to the nerve. So when we do this here, notice I'm moving in, because when I move in, the hand is weaker. If I move out, the hand is stronger. This goes without saying, if you ever tried to break a grab by pulling away from the person, it's difficult to do. It's much easier and takes very little effort to simply move towards them. As I move towards, you notice I'm in his range. That elbow can go anywhere, or I can pull the hand back and simply strike. I have those options. So that's the first one. If you grab me crossways with the opposite hand, I do exactly the same thing. I turn the wrist and move towards him. Turning the wrist is very important because it opens the hand up. If you'll notice, your wrist is not round, it's oblong, unless you're a very unusual person. So when you grab here, and you look at how this works, when the wrist turns, the hand loses its grip. You can see this very clearly. The hand opens up. Closed hand here, open hand here. It's that simple. These are basic rules, and they apply to everybody. This is a universal method of releasing a grab. But it's something actually very few people practice. Why? I don't know. But there are very few arts that, that teach this. Chinna is one of, the, one of the arts that teaches this as a basic, absolutely necessary part of grappling. So, again, we have same side, strike, elbow or knife hand, opposite side, we have strike here. Now, we're going to go with the wrist locks. So, as he grabs, now we have an opposite side grab here. Thing to remember here, I'm going to take this middle finger, <laughs> and I'm not flipping anybody off here. This is just showing the finger. I'm grabbing here and pushing into the web of the, of the hand. As I do this, I push the hand tight against me. Now, I'm going to step in, rotate my hand, and keep the hands so that his hand is vertical, like this little finger pointing to the sky, thumb to the ground. Let's turn around here, and let's get a better look at this. So as you see from the grab here, turning here. Now, do I have to grab this? No, all I have to do is hold on to the hand, because if I let go of it, there's no grip. There's nothing. So I have to hang on. So that's why I'm using a pressure point here, grabbing and pressing in to the web of the thumb and turning and holding. Now all I have to do is make sure that that hand is vertical, like this, and move in to bend the elbow so that I have a little bit better control and torque and touch. That's all there is to it. If I grab, it actually increases the amount of pressure in another way, a way that most people don't realize. Here, I can actually grab the nerve here on the inside of the wrist and press on it. Now, you notice the effect that has. It's <laughs> yes. distinctly painful. <laughs> and now we're getting into something that few people realize with slip sets. They all can involve nerve pressure. Nerve pressure here, nerve pressure here. So I'm not just using a joint lock. I'm using multiple points to disrupt this person's energy flow and to weaken them, cause them to one let go. So, there's that one. Now, if we want to go to the outside, and we're going to use the same hand here, yep. we're going to step in and we're going to again rotate our hand so that the hand opens up. We're going to press here into the base of the thumb and we're going to press here, right in between these two knuckles. When we do this and you press inside into the nerves, we can cause great pain. So when we do this, and this, is, this technique is called kotegaishi, we turn, we use this hand as reinforcement and press. When we do this fast, it'll tear the wrist up. We do it just right and they'll fall to the ground and we'll have control. So when we do this, we're actually going to step in and then pull out. And the reason for this is because if we get too close, that person can spin out of it. We lose our maximum leverage. Our maximum leverage is right out here, almost exactly 90 degrees between here and here. So this is the correct angle to make this technique work. Too far out, we lose our leverage. Too close in, our leverage is not in the right place. So 90 degrees here, turn. 
It's important to note that angles and even foot position are the two of the most important aspects of joint locks that you can have. So here we have two uh, same side, or excuse me, opposite side joint locks, one going over, one going under. See the motion here and here. This is a good exercise to perform. So when you're doing this, you step one, two. Now, what else can we do? See, this leads right into this. This is a very good joint lock and it's a solid one. While I'm here, can I pick my heel up and take the face? Yes, very easily. Or can I simply lean on the elbow and crank the hand? As I crank the hand, you'll notice this hand here, I'm actually pulling this wrist in here. As I do this, I apply pressure, pinching the elbow in and straightening it out. This is my leverage. My arm should be right above the elbow for maximum effect. So from here, crank. That's about it. What happens to the person on the other end? He generally does a face plant. Mm -hmm. And he's down for the count. From there, you sit with him. You can go into just about any number of grappling techniques from that position. So there's our lead. We start. One, two, and notice this is an extension of number one. Okay, what else can we do here? Okay, if I'm here, can I swing the arm around and come up here? Now, the trick here is to bring your hands together while you're in this position. I can pretty much bet that it's going to be very difficult for that person to stomp on your feet or do anything else that will distract you from what you're doing at that time. And again, this is a direct extension of a technique. So, kotegaishi, kotemawashi, and we have this technique here whose name I have uh, forgotten, and then we have coming in and here. Now if you notice, fingers here, fingers here. Grab them together if you can, you wind up with a choke at the same time. Now, pull this person backwards and you put him in a position he will find very difficult to get out of. So this is all on the opposite hand. Let's see what we've got with the same hand. Okay, we've got grab release here. We've got a different way of doing kota gaishi by bringing the hand up here and rotating here. Now, can I increase the leverage by rolling the hands. Oh yes, that is very painful. So if I find resistance, I simply roll the fingers over. You notice his wrist isn't bent the way it should be. It's gonna be kind of hard to bend that wrist, so we use the fingers as an additional emphasis. We roll the entire hand over. Can I use pressure points? Absolutely. This thumb goes, this thumb goes right here and digs into the nerve between the fingers and it just buries itself. That was good. <laughs> now, what we see here, the dynamics of this, of this turn is that I'm pulling with my fingers on the pad of the thumb and I'm pushing here. It's not just a matter of turning, it's a matter of conscious effort to do the opposite between thumb and fingers. So, by opposite I mean I'm pulling here, pushing here, push-pull, again. Roll, push-pull. Dig the fingers in. Make pain because any joint lock works better with pain compliance added, not just from the joint lock, but from nerve impact itself. So there we have our first technique. Okay, one, two, and three. Roll the fingers. We've got something that's going to be very painful. Let's go over the top. We step in, and again, we're going to pinch the hand as tight as we can, again, impacting the nerves right here and right here. We're going to grab them and we're going to pinch. As we do this, we step in, roll, and here is, we, we have what I call, um, what do I call this? Bird of paradise. Bird of paradise, right. Kind of looks like the head of a bird of paradise, doesn't it? And again, we step in, increasing the amount of leverage, and drop down. And this is the point at which you strike this nerve. So you're pushing on the nerve at the same time. Now, here, here again. It puts a tremendous strain right on that ligament as well. It puts a tremendous strain on there. And again, we slip right into this motion here. So, 
Same side, opposite side, doesn't matter, does it? Because the techniques are the same. There are minor differences in how you execute the technique, but the technique itself remains the same. What do we do from there? Okay, we've got this one here. We've got this one here. We slide in, pull out. Now we've got another one. This one actually is a straight up and down. We extend and pull. This one is probably one of the easiest and most deceptive to do because it doesn't look like it's going to do that much. From here, all I have to do is twitch. That's it. I'm hitting nerves here. I'm hitting nerves here, right in the knuckles, and I'm creating a tremendous strain along the forearm, tendons, and ligaments. From here, we slide in, loop around, come up, and hook. Now from here, could I actually take my hand all the way around and pull the head up? Yes, I can, because I just did it. And he looks very uncomfortable, but I'm not going to say anything to him right at the moment. And again, it's a matter of taking the person off balance, bending their back by pushing on the back and pulling back on the head. This makes it almost impossible for them to resist without causing themselves further damage. Then I can reach across, grab the collar, and go into a choke and a leveraged neck pinch all at the same time. So, there is a look at our slip sets. Very functional, very basic, and the idea here is to flow with them, to be able to make these motions natural extensions from one to the next. When you can do that, you've really got a pretty good handle on your ability to transition from move to move or from lock to lock without losing your, uh, your tension on the joint. And this is very important. What else can we do on these? Now you've seen several types of joint locks here uh, used in the slip set, and what we're going to do now is look at the variations of them. And the same side here, is it possible to simply grab here and pull down? Yes, it is, but it's not what I would call a foolproof way of doing it because there's not enough leverage and pain involved to control the person. They can spin, they can turn, and once they spin, you've lost the joint completely, and this is what's going to happen. So I prefer not ever doing that to drag a person down. I just won't do it. What I'll do is I'll keep the hand vertical here, and I'll pull down this way. This is what is really hard to turn on, because once a person, as long as this hand is vertical, that person can't turn. They won't